What is up you guys? It's Kaylee. I'm back for another what sold from last week video. If you guys have been following along my journey, you know that lately we have really been ramping up our listings and we are just doing things to increase business. With that comes a lot of growing pains. I'm gonna be honest, I really, really felt them last week. I know I've kind of talked about that before where I've had some kind of rough weeks, but this was definitely the roughest week I have ever had in reselling. And again, a lot of it was just growing pains. But we're through them now, we've got a process, we've got a plan, and I'm ready to see if executing it works. So things have been a little chaotic, but I do think that we are on a good path. And starting next week, I can't wait to start the week off right and really dive deep into some of those efficiency processes that we stopped and really took a look at this week. We redid all of our timing, pretty much all of our processes to make sure we were doing them correctly. And moving forward, we are going to be a machine. Just kind of wanted to catch you up on where we were at, but we are going to dive into the sales. I'm going to talk about what sold on both eBay and Poshmark last week, and then I'll show you some like sprinkled in sales of some that I thought were really good that you might want to look for. Let's dive in now. All right, you guys, everything that you see here on the screen happened between January 8th through the 14th. That is a Sunday through a Saturday, and that is how I calculate my weeks. Pretty much nothing's changed in total. We sold 389 items for a gross sales of $6,358.04. Average sale price was $16.34, which is really low. Um, once again, as you can see, we were clearancing a lot of older items. This is coming to a close. I know I keep saying that, but I think we are about to reach the end of all of those older items, but that's the reason for the drop in average sale price. Estimated cost of goods based on average buy cost was $1,556, making my estimated net gross net, which is gross sales, less cost of goods, fees, shipping costs, and any discounts that I gave for shipping on Poshmark was $3,089.31. On eBay, I sold 83 items. On Poshmark, I sold 306 items. So you can see we moved a lot of stuff. Whenever I do closet clear out, we also have a ton of bundles. And when I say bundles, I mean there's like bundles of 20 items, there's bundles of 12 items, bundles of 18 items. Like we've been moving some pretty big bundles. Um, of older items, which again is the reason for that drop in that average sale price, which is really dragging down my total. On eBay, with those 83 items, I made a gross sales of $2,856.34, making my average sale price $34.41. This is more where we want to be at after all of this clearance. And on Poshmark, Again, we moved 306 items for a gross sales total of $3,501.70, making an average sale price of just $11.44. But we did still have some really good sales, like full price sales on Poshmark, which I'm going to share with you today. So let's dive into some of these sales. First one that I had on eBay was this cool men's collusion jacket. This is a really great outdoors wear brand. I talk about this a lot. I pick up pretty much everything in this brand. The men's stuff's gonna do better and outerwear is gonna do better. This one is kind of a special jacket. You can see it's got its own style name. And we actually paid up for this jacket. We paid $12.99. We listed it for $99.87. And it did sell for a full asking price within a couple weeks of listing. It's a really great sale and I would be on the hunt for outerwear in this brand and obviously pretty much anything in this brand is really good. Next up is another great outdoors, outdoorsy wear brand. Um, it is Patagonia. Some people, believe it or not, are being like really choosy on Patagonia. I personally pick up almost anything in this brand. But if you're somebody who skips on like the lower end items like the t-shirts, one thing that you might want to look for are the pants like the hiking pants, those perform really well. These ones I think were a newer style. It's called the Skyline Travel Pants in a size extra large. And it's also worth noting that sometimes it is worth figuring out the style because that can help to increase the value as well on your Patagonia items. We paid $4.89 for this. We listed for $69.88. It sold on an offer to watcher for $62.89. And it took about a month and a half to sell. 
This is a kind of an outlier of a J. Jill item, so I wanted to share it with you guys. This is a brand I try to pick up in exclusively larger sizes. As you can see, this one is a small petite, which is a very small and kind of odd sizing with the petites. Um, but I was looking at this at the thrift store because it was super artsy and colorful. And I found in this brand, regardless of size, anything like this that is, again, super artsy tends to perform pretty well. So I did a Google lens on this and figured out that it was called the Madison Duster Cardigan. And this particular cardigan performs really well. And so regardless of the small size, I went ahead and picked that up. I paid $4.89 for it. And I listed it for about $50. It ended up selling on an offer to watcher for $44.92. And that sold within just a couple weeks of getting it listed. Actually, about a week of getting it listed because we listed this in January. So I'd highly recommend, I know we preach about larger sizes in J. Jill, but if you find something kind of artsy like this, maybe give it a look up um, because there are a couple exceptions with the smaller sizes and this would be one of them. Next up is a brand that I am pretty picky with. It is Theory. This is a brand that retails for a lot, but doesn't always tend to have a good resale, resale value or a sell-through rate. Um, but this one was Cashmere. So that was the main reason we looked it up. It is a turtleneck sweater dress. Really pretty. Also a size large. Pretty much anything 100% cashmere I'm looking up. I've got a couple examples of that today. But this is an exception I would make for this brand just because it's cashmere. So we paid $4.89 for this. We listed it, I think we originally listed it, to be honest with you, like in the $60 to $70 range. Um, it has since sat, I think we priced it too high for a few months. We dropped price and it ended up selling for $58.46, which is a really good return on investment. However, because I knew that this brand didn't have a great sell through rate, even with all those great factors, I probably should have priced lower than my competitors in order to get it moving quickly. And I think that's what happened here, but still a really great return on investment. And maybe you want to look for some cashmere pieces in theory. This is one of my favorite kind of sales to share with you. It is a Y2K sale. A lot of you guys are asking me to share more about like the Y2K style and how I know what to pick up. So this is Steve Madden. This can be a great brand to look for um, for Y2K styles and footwear. And as you can see, these are some pretty old, um, just pretty plain black slides. They do have some wear throughout them. We made sure to note that. Um, but really great sale and sold within a couple of months. So one thing that I look for in um, any Y2K footwear is for like a chunky platform, which these ones are. Um, simplicity is usually best, and I really like black simple shoes. I find that those ones tend to sell the best. But the one thing that you're really looking for is this chunky block or platform heel. That's what's going to perform really well. And then slides are really, really in right now. Um, so I would definitely use this keyword if you've got something like this where you slip it on. That would be called a slide if it is lower. And people are really, really into that right now. I've sold a ton of these lately. So these ones we actually got at the bins. I'd say we probably paid a couple bucks for the pair. We listed them for $44.88. Like I said, it sold within about a month and a half to two months for our full asking price. So a bins pickup based on style into $45. I will take that all day long, but this is a style that you might want to look for. Next up is a modern shoe sale. It is a pair of, I don't know if it's Teva or Teva, I think it's Teva, but this brand retails for quite a bit. It is more of a, like an outdoorsy wear footwear brand, T-E-V-A. Um, these were a pair of nice leather boots and I saw that they were doing pretty good. So I took a chance on these because I thought they were a nice style. I paid $6.99 for them. We listed them for $39.87. There was a little bit of wear, but they still sold for our full asking price and it took about a month to sell. I'm going to show you a couple examples of Levi's jeans that are selling for me. This is one of them. Um, anything Levi's that specifically states baggy on it, you're definitely, definitely 100% going to want to pick up. Um, 
I've actually been picking them up with significant staining and wear and they've still been selling well for me. I can't say that like once a bunch of people figure this out and put a bunch of better condition ones on eBay or on Poshmark that they're going to continue selling as quickly with the flaws. But for right now, the ones with the flaws are selling even still super fast for me. So these are a pair of vintage Levi's silver tab baggy jeans. These are a men's size 31 by 32. Very popular style right now. People are really into the baggy wear. Um, I picked these up for $6.99 and we listed them for $44.91. They sold within a week for our full asking price. So absolutely, yes, I would definitely keep your eye out for this. And later on in this video, I'll show you some more uh, modern styles of Levi's that you can look for as well. This was a sale I thought that was worth noting. I've been talking to you guys about picking up kids jackets. I've been spending a lot more time in the kids section. To be honest, I'm really only looking for misplaced adult items and outerwear in the kids section and the brands that I would normally pick up in the adults. L.L. Bean is one of those brands. I'm looking for puffer jackets in this brand. This is a boys down tech puffer coat. I only paid $2.50 for it. And we listed it for $44.87. And it sold for our full asking price. And it only took about a month to sell. That is a crazy return on investment on a kid's item. And I'm starting to really get the hang of kids outerwear and which ones sold for a lot. Like I'm talking like $35 to $45. And it's been going really well because people are not going in that section and they're leaving that stuff behind. So this is my message to you. If you're not already, just run through the kids section. Look for some really high quality puffer jackets. That would be like your L.L. Bean, sometimes Columbia, definitely North Face and, you know, stuff like that. And give it a comp, obviously, but they're performing really, really well. And I'm surprised by the amount I'm able to get for them. This is a newer brand to me. It's called Onward Reserve. And this is the only time I think I found this brand. Actually, I think Nikki picked these up. But these are a pair of like performance pants where they're kind of in between a dress pant and an athletic pant. And that that's the main reason we looked them up. But this brand seemed to be doing pretty good in this style. We paid $4.89 for them. And it sold for a full asking price of $44.91 and it only took a week to sell. So definitely keep your eye out for this brand. You can see they've got a little bear logo. Here's another Levi's that you might want to look for. I talk about this um, in quite a few videos, but it is the 501 women's jeans, the more modern ones. Um, all I can say is you'll know which ones to get based on the tag. And I'm trying to zoom in for you, but as you can see, it's a pretty plain, simple without the sizing. And normally men's have the waist and the inseam on the right hand side. These ones just say 501 and they say CT or sometimes they say 501S. Either way, these are the ones that you want to look for. Um, I got these specifically cause they had an undone hem too. So I thought that would make them sell quicker. I will be honest, when you do comps on this style in women's, it does not have a 100% sell-through rate, but I continue to get them because even though they might sit a little bit longer, um, and by the way, typically they do sell within three months for me, but even though the data shows they might not sell as quickly, they always sell really well for me. And even if I sit on them, I always end up coming back with a great return on investment. I usually can sell them for about $35 to $40, sometimes even up to $50, depending on the size. But this is something I would definitely look for. So I pretty, feel pretty confident picking these up now in pretty much any size, because again, for me, they are flipping. We paid $6.99 for these. We listed them for $39.88. They took about a month and a half to sell, and they sold for an offer to watcher of $35.89. Again, that is women's 501 jeans when they have a tag that looks like that. I haven't brought up this brand in a while, so I thought I would mention it again. It is Catherine's. I'm not saying pick up everything in Catherine's, um, but lately it has been a pretty consistent seller for us. We do try to stick to the like completely plus sizes, like 2X, 3X, 4X seem to perform the best for us. This one's an outerwear item that we found at the bins, and it had a scarf included with this like pea coat. Pretty good sale, honestly, and a really quick flip. It sold within a week of getting it listed. We listed it for $34.91. And yeah, Catherine's item. Um, the tops are definitely like 
in my opinion, hit or miss. You definitely want to do a specific comp with the size, but I can usually get about 25 bucks for the tops as well. Okay, don't come for me. <laughs> this is a brand I've been experimenting with. You guys have told me there's a little bit of controversy over it because some people are telling me I shouldn't be able to get this much for it. I'm getting this much for it on some stuff. People are telling me I'm wasting my money, but I'm personally seeing success with this brand, um, even in smaller sizes. Now, I will say there are like only specific pieces I'm getting, but I'm kind of testing it out to see. So one of the things that I do know that is selling in Abercrombie and Fitch are the sweatpants. There's something Y2K feel about Abercrombie sweatpants right now. And I think that's the main reason that they are selling really well. But even if you do a comp on Abercrombie sweatpants and joggers, they, I mean, the comps are there. They're doing really well. So this was a pair of men's kind of taper jogger-esque sweatpants. They were actually a size small, which I was a little hesitant to get them. But after doing a comp, I felt pretty comfortable with it. I actually paid $6.99 for these, believe it or not. We listed them for $34.87. They took about a month to sell, but they sold for my full asking price, which I know is crazy. But I'm not telling you to go pick up everything Abercrombie and Fitch, but I am telling you if you see sweatpants, joggers, especially in the men's department, I would definitely do a lookup. Next up is a free people item. We all know what free people looks like. I just thought I would mention with spring and summer coming up that if you're someone who skips on free people, I would say if you find like jumpsuits or longer length dresses like this one is I would consider that a midi dress so midi to maxi I would pick them up I am becoming myself more pickier on free people but I do know that the jumpsuits the maxis and the midi length dresses always perform really well for me we paid $8.99 for this we did list it in the wrong season so it did sit for several months but it just sold for an offer to watcher of $36.49, which is still a great return on investment. And I think had we listed this maybe now or closer to spring, it probably would have sold quicker and for more money. But if you're someone who's being picky on free people, this is a category I would look in. Here's another Patagonia sale. This is a men's a Western flannel shirt. Not too much to say about that, but we sold it for $34. We paid $4.69 for it. I definitely keep your eye out for Patagonia button-up shirts. They seem to be performing well. Here's another J. Jill sell. This is a 3X women's top, and it was new with tags. Believe it or not, we actually paid $10.99 for this top, but we felt very confident confident doing so because it was a 3x and it was new with tags and the comps were there for it so this is definitely a brand that you want to do a lot of factor stacking with you know we mentioned the artsy piece before that sold that is kind of an outlier this is more of the stuff that i try to pick up in j jill are the plus size pieces so we paid 10.99 we listed for about 45 dollars. it sold within about a month and a half for an offer to watcher of 40 dollars 39 cents so about 11 into 40, pretty good sale. Here's an exception I made on a brand just because it was cashmere. I like to mention this once again, kind of like that theory piece because I'm willing to pick up stuff if it is 100% cashmere. Obviously you want to do your comp. This is a Neiman Marcus, not a brand I normally get, 100% cashmere sweater. This is a size large. It had some color blocking. We paid $4.89 for it. We listed it for about $40. It sold for an offer of $34, which again, for a brand that I don't normally pick up, that's a really good sale. And it also sold within about three months. Here's another example, and I think the last example of Levi's that I would look for, and it is the wedgie straight or any kind of wedgie jean. If it says wedgie on the tag, I would pick it up. Personally, for me, kind of the same thing as those 501s. I do the comps. 100% sell-through rate is not there, but this is a style that just sells really well for me. So I wanted to share that with you. These were also a button fly size 27. And again, this is just a style that performs really, really well for me. Kind of um, 
kind of the same like price range in my opinion as the 501s. I can usually get anywhere from like 35 to 50, 35 on the lower end, and then 50 on the higher end. Uh, we paid $6.99 for these. We listed them for $34.87. It took about three weeks to sell and they sold for our full asking price. I think they're selling quicker than what the comps are showing because I'm also choosing to price on the lower end to get them to move. So that might be a strategy that you want to use. This is an L.L. Bean item. I thought it was worth sharing. Um, I like sharing my L.L. Bean sales because where I'm at, which is like the Midwest, this is a brand I come across pretty often. And so I like to know in this brand what I can pick up consistently and make good money on. This is a size 2X, so a plus size women's like snap button up striped hoodie. Um, main reason I got it was because it was plus size. I paid $4.89 for it, listed it for $29.87. It sold on an offer to watcher for $26.88. And it only took a few weeks to sell. So something you might want to keep your eye out for. Not a huge sale, but a quick flip. Last one on eBay before we dive into some of those higher price Poshmark sales. This is a brand I do like getting. This is one I make exceptions for. I Maybe that should be the theme of this video. I made an exception on sell-through rate. This one also does not show a 100% sell-through rate. But again, it's one that moves pretty consistently for me and sells for good money. Um... And once again, in that same price range of about $35 to probably $45 on this one, this is Joseph Ribkoff. It is a designer brand that retails for quite a bit. And some pieces do have a really good sell-through rate. Tops, in my opinion, are not really one of them. But again, I'm willing to sit on them to get that return on investment. We paid $4.89 for this, just a pretty plain black ruched top. We listed it for $35.99. It did take a few months to sell, but it sold on an offer to watcher for $32.39. So I'm going to continue to pick up this brand until it does not perform well for me anymore, but currently and for over a year now has been really consistent. So let's dive into some of these Poshmark sales. This was a really good sale on Poshmark. This sold lightning fast, um, I think within the first week of getting it listed, maybe even days. This is Aloe Yoga. This is a brand I really like picking up. Um, it really depends on what the piece is. I knew that these were special because they were a pair of joggers and had like that cargo style. Size extra small, not my favorite size to get, but these were really, really nice. I mean, they felt really, really high quality. We paid $4.89 for these, and I think we listed them for $70. My Posh VA sent out a 10% off offer to Watcher, and so someone accepted that offer of $63. Really great return on investment there. Here's another cashmere piece that sold. This is Tweeds. This one also sold lightning fast, literally days of getting it listed, which was really surprising. This is not a brand that I would look for, but all of these factors stacked are what really sold it. It was 100% cashmere. does kind of have almost like a Y2K, like clueless vibe to it, which is another reason I thought it would sell quickly. It's got the Argyle diamond print throughout. And all of those reasons, we decided to pick it up. Paid $4.89 for it. I think we listed it for $35 on Posh. It sold for an offer to Watcher. Actually, you know what? I think we priced it at 30. Posture VA sent out a 10% offer. I have it sent out 10% off offers after like five minutes of the item being liked, which made it $27 is what it sold for. Um, and again, that was a 10% off offer sent to Watchers. This is a fantastic brand to pick up. I'm starting to learn more and more about this brand as we come across it. It is Taylor Stitch. Everything that I've picked up in this brand has sold very, very quickly. I think I actually showed this in a ship with me video maybe. So this is a pair of men's hemp organic cotton pants, very thick and high quality. Everything that I found in this brand, I've been able to tell what it was because of how thick the fabric was, everything. Well, I think we've even sold shirts in this brand, like button-up shirts. They're all super thick, which is why I think this brand has such a good following because it does feel super high quality. Uh, we paid $4.89 for these pants. We listed them for 50 
Again, Posture VA sent out a 10% off automatic offers to watchers after somebody liked the item and one of those watch watchers accepted for an offer of $45. These ones also only took, I think, one to two weeks to sell. This is a brand I keep your eye out for. It doesn't sell for much, anywhere from like 20 to 30, depending on what you have. It is Yellow Man. Sometimes it just says YMX. It is a cycling brand and they're pretty easy to spot because they usually have really unique like prints and multicolor to them. Um, this one we got for $3.75. It sold for $20. I've sold some in the past that were long sleeve for anywhere between $25 and $30. So I thought that this was a brand that I would bring up again. Here's another kind of Y2K style item. This is Donald J. Pliner. This is a designer brand, once again, that retails for a lot, but does not have the best sell-through rate or resell value. But this is one particular style that always performs well for me. I've sold many of these in the past. It is called Fiji, F-I-J-I. And they do have a thong like toe insert in the middle that you can kind of see here, but otherwise they pretty much look like slides, which again, as I mentioned before, this style is really popular. So that was the initial reason that I looked it up the first time I came across these. But every time I pick these up, they always fly really fast. This one actually had some what I think are paint spots all over it and kind of see them here. So they were, um, again, heavily flawed and I don't think that those are going to come out but we just made sure to note that and I dropped the price and they still sold for $25 if that tells you how popular this style is so I would definitely keep your eye out for that uh, we paid $4.99 for these here's another shoe sale definitely a brand I would keep your eye out for it is Dansko um, one thing about this brand that I've just kind of noticed is it used to be that the like workwear clogs were what sold the best in this brand now in my opinion it's the more modern style shoes so still a comfort brand but as you can see these are more of a modern style and those are what are performing the best for me these were actually a really small size they were a size 36 which translated to a 5.5 to 6 us but this uh, style Shaley, I did a Google lens on the shoe and it immediately came up. That is one tip I have for you for dance goes. If you do a Google lens, usually Google can recognize that it's dance go and give you the exact style name within seconds. So I did that and I saw that the Shaley style was doing really well. So I took a chance on it, even with that smaller size. We paid $6.99 for these and we listed them for $45. I believe this was a full price sale. Someone just bought them outright. These took a couple of weeks to sell. Here's another Catherine's item. This is a 4X top. Again, trying to stick to the large sizes in this brand because it is a plus size brand. That's what people are known for. We paid $4.89 for this and it sold for our full price sale of $35 on Poshmark. I will say Catherine's is not really a brand that sells well for me on Poshmark. It tends to sell on eBay, but even some of the pieces are performing really well on Poshmark. So this is a sale that I wanted to show you. This is Madewell. This is also a brand I've been slowing down a lot on, but again, plus size. And this one was new with tags. You can see it retailed for $50 at Nordstrom. Um, which is about what I actually priced it for. This one also sold very, very quickly. Again, I think just because it was plus size for $40. Great return on investment. We paid $4.89 for it. If you're someone who's skipping on Madewell, in the rare instance that you come across plus sizes because I don't come across them very often, I would definitely snatch those up. Here's a pretty good bread and butter brand for me. It is Soft Surroundings. I do try to stick to, again, larger sizes. Size large and up have a really good sell-through rate. This one's a pair of size extra large pull-on pants. Um, we listed this for $29 on Poshmark, and it sold just outright full price within a couple of days of listing. We only paid $2.25 for this. And last sale, I thought I would end up with another kid's sale, kind of like the L.L. Bean puffer coat we were talking about. Great return on investment with this. I've actually sold quite a few of these here lately. It is North Face Girls Reversible Puffer Jackets. 
so it's got the puffer on the outside and then it has the uh, like fur fleece on the inside. I've sold a lot of these for anywhere from $35 to $45 and they always sell super quickly. So I just kind of look for that when I'm at the thrift store and you'd be surprised at how many times I've come across them. This one I only paid $3.99 for. That's another thing. Thrift stores price kids items super cheap. So the outerwear is only four bucks and I flipped this into $36. And this one also only took a few weeks to sell. So that's it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. If you're not already and you would like to be, don't forget to subscribe down below and make sure to hit that notification bell. If you do that, you'll be notified every time I post these videos. I'll be interested to see where we shake out next week and how sales kind of like dip and go up over the next several months, just moving like through Q1 and into Q2. Already thinking about summer slowdown, believe it or not. So I want to prepare for that now. But that's it for today's video. I'm going to dive off of here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.